My family moved here in 1973. An ideal vineyard was one that was just like a pool table. Nothing but dirt between the grapevines and the rows. Flat as a board, no weed out there. Nothing but dirt. To get that look in the vineyard, unfortunately, took a lot of chemicals, a lot of herbicides that kill all the weeds. After seven or eight or nine years of farming like that, we started to wonder a little bit about that because we've got our dogs out in the vineyard, we've got our kids playing out there, our workers who have become our dear friends, ourselves, we're all out in that vineyard that's getting hit with a lot of chemicals. By the late 80s, being concerned about all our chemical use in the vineyard, we started to look at alternative ways to farm. We started to explore ways to farm sustainably. The first step was to use something we call cover crops. In the fall, right around harvest, we plant bell beans, vetch, clovers in between the vine rows. Those plants grow throughout the winter time, have a nice big stand in the spring of this beautiful cover crop. Those plants become a habitat for predaceous insects like ladybugs, spiders, lacewings, and those bugs eat the bad bugs that we used to have to spray for. So all of a sudden, with this establishment of cover crop, we didn't have to spray for the bad bugs anymore. A few years ago, to up the ante against these predaceous insects, we experimented with songbird houses, basically little bird houses throughout the vineyard which attract swallows and bluebirds, birds which eat insects like there's no tomorrow. As we got more and more into using cover crops in our vineyards, we found they were very beneficial for other things besides a, a home for predaceous insects. Number one, great for erosion control in the wintertime. In the old days when we didn't have cover crops, we would lose a lot of soil in the winter rains on these hillside vineyards. Now with the cover crop growing in the wintertime, we don't lose any soil at all. So that's been wonderful for erosion control. Another aspect which is great about cover crop is it's a way to naturally fertilize the soil. As cover crop dies off in the summer, we either mow it down or plow it under, depending on the year, depending on the vineyard. Over time, nitrogens, phosphorus, potassium that are in the cover crop itself get incorporated into the soil. So it's a way of naturally fertilizing the soil. A few years after we started using cover crops in the vineyard, we started to use our grape skins and grape clusters at harvest time, which we used to take to the dump or burn and we would take that waste material from harvest and compost it. So now between the compost we're making here on site and the cover crops naturally breaking down into the soils, we've eliminated the need for chemical fertilizers here at Schaefer Vineyards. In the old days with that pool table vineyard without a piece of grass out there, you never had any issue with any little varmints living in the soil. The varmints are like gophers and moles. Now with that cover crop out there, the gophers and moles love it. Man, that is their new home. And the problem with these guys is, as the summertime comes on and all the cover crop dies, they go from the cover crop and they start eating the roots of our grapevines. Not a good thing when you're in the wine business. And then I read a great article years ago about raptors. Raptors are like hawks and owls that eat gophers and moles. And what we did is we went out and we put up perches, 20 foot high poles throughout the vineyard, a place for these hawks to hunt from. They work great during the daytime. Now, nighttime, we found a better solution. Barn owl boxes. These guys only come out at night. You never see them during the day. We put up these great boxes. We've got them in there. We can tell because lots of gopher bones underneath the box. But these uh, barn owls come out at night and they are ferocious. In fact, a family of four barn owls might take care of a thousand gophers in a season. By the early 90s, once we had the cover crop and sustainable ag steps in place, we started to become a little concerned about water. We're out here in California. It doesn't rain between April and October. There's a limited water supply out here. And these hillside vineyards are dry, shallow soil. We need to irrigate them throughout the growing season. So we embarked on a plan to figure out the best way to recycle and reuse water to the, the best of our ability. We developed two separate water storage ponds. The first one was one that captured all the wastewater produced in the winery, recycled it, treated it, to a point where we could reuse it again to irrigate the vineyards. The second step was a tough one. We had to pull out four acres of prime Cabernet vineyard to give us land to dig a big pond to capture winter rain runoff. Now what's great with this two pond system we've developed, we're actually able to irrigate all our vineyards throughout the summer with water from these two ponds and we recycle every drop of water we use inside the winery. By the late 90s, right around 2000, we were 
really happy. The cover crop thing worked out. We had our recycled water program going, which was super, feeling good about that. But you know, there was one more piece of the puzzle, and I missed it, because I was too busy trying to grow grapes and make and sell wine. And uh, I have to give my dad credit for this one. He uh, came into my office one day and said, you know, Doug, I've been reading these articles about solar power, and we're living here in California where the sun shines from March to October. We got to do this. So I said, you know, Dad, I don't have time for this. He says, well, I'll take care of it. So I said, great, you do it. And about six weeks later, he comes back with this big folder. And he says, I've got all the research. Here's the deal. I said, I'm not going to read that. He says, you don't need to. We're doing it. In 2004, we made the decision. We built a great solar array. We flicked the switch, and boom, we're on solar power, 100%. Probably the first winery in the country to go 100% solar powered. Now what happens is you go up and look at the meter, and it's running backwards instead of forwards. We love that. Not only that, it's clean power, clean kilowatts. We're not burning coal, fossil fuels, which would pollute the atmosphere. This is clean juice running Schaefer Vineyards. So we love it. We love it so much that right now in 2008, we're just about to flick the switch on a new array that's going to power our irrigation pumps up in the vineyard. We've been growing grapes and making wine here for over 30 years, and we've worked very hard to grow the best grapes we can and make some of the best wines we can. We've also worked hard to preserve this environment, preserve this wonderful site we have. So when you go out and you take a walk in the vineyard, you see a songbird, you see a red-tailed hawk, you see a deer trying to eat some grapevines, you see a wild turkey or some ducks in the pond, and that's truly a wonderful thing. It feels like we've made the right steps today and the right steps for the future.